Hello guys, welcome back to Axangel RC. Happy New Year to all, and let's pray that it will be better than the last. Now, let's get on with this video and yet another model which has taken a long time to get off the ground. You all probably know it well by now, the T1 Ranger. But before I move to the Vito conversion, I would like to say a few words about the plane in its regular form. Since I got the plug and play version, I can definitely appreciate the fact of how much work has been done in the factory and how easy it is to put together and get it ready for flight. I do appreciate its ability to be pulled apart into chunks for very easy transport and I even did transport it one time in the top case of my Honda Transalp to an RC event in another city where I wanted to go by motorcycle and the T1 was literally the only model I have which can be easily broken down to pieces that would fit in the case along with radio batteries, chargers, etc. Basically everything needed to get it flying and keep it flying all day long. The foam is also nice and stiff, durable and does add to the durability of the model. However, since I did not go for a 3S battery but went straight to 4S, I discovered two things. First, on 4S this little thing is a speed demon. It would go vertical without end and becomes an insane toy to play with. Absolutely mind-boggling performance. And I am impressed by the stock motors and how well they handle all this 4S punishment and how much thrust they actually have, especially with those tiny props. The 4S flying did bring to light a pretty serious issue, for me at least, that the T1 Ranger has, and that is the complete inadequate wing mounting and locks for the amount of zeal these motors have on 4S. Yes, if you use like 25% throttle on 4S or fly the plane on 3S or perhaps if possible even on 2S, you most likely may not run into that issue if you take it easy all the time. However, Punching 4S to full makes the wings come out of their locks a little bit, which in turn severs the connection for ESC and servo power for a split second, which resets the ESC mid-flight, and when it boots up again, its throttle range gets all screwed up, so the two motors now run with different throttle curves, and the plane becomes pretty much unflyable at anything other than minimal throttle, and a lot of correction from the radio to keep it from spinning, if even possible to prevent that in such a situation. These instances even caused one of the plastic centering pins on the right wing to break off, mostly because it wasn't a carbon tube, which made the problem even more pronounced even when doing sharper turns. Didn't even have to apply too much throttle. Now this was a huge problem because if this mounting system can't handle some aerobatics or full throttle at 4S, how is it going to do after the VTOL conversion? This just wasn't going to do it. The way I solved the issue in the short term at least was to use wood screws with washers, screw them into the plastic bits of the wing on the inside of the fuselage and they would basically hold the wings in and won't let them wiggle out of the locks. How long this scheme is going to last is unclear, but this now made assembling and disassembling the plane a whole lot more tedious and pretty much eliminated its convenience when it comes to transporting it, since it is a chore to screw those wings in and out of the plane. Kinda defeats the purpose of having quick wing disconnects. I am not sure if the official He Wing T1 Vito has a different wing mounting system, but in this case, even in regular plane form and with a 4S battery dismounting solution, in my mind, is a failure and needs to be redesigned. Having said that, even with all these issues, I still pressed on to convert this little sucker to a Vito, as it did provide a pretty convenient and easy platform to work on to get into Vitos. Plus, it would be much cheaper compared to building a larger one, and I had pretty much all the necessary parts, plus a few bits that needed to be 3D printed, which my ancient Ender 2 printer was more than sufficient to handle. In reality, if I had one more of the stock T1 Ranger motors, I think that I could have used those for the VTOL conversion easily as they seem to have more than enough thrust on 4S to get the job done. Sadly, when the motivation to get this project going washed over me, I knew I had to act fast and there was no time to wait for deliveries from China, so I had to use whatever I had available at hand. The motors I used were originally procured for the purpose of building a 7 inch long range quad, but since that is something I never did get the motivation for, I thought I'd put them towards this project instead. 
They are larger and more powerful than what is recommended to be used, but it's all I have readily available at hand, so they would have to do. Each motor has around 1.5 kg of thrust at 4S, so I knew I would have to limit throttle in order to prevent the motors from pulling the plane apart in the event of a sudden full throttle situation. I was also praying that the screws holding the wings in would prove sufficient and the plastic on the wings will not break or strip, else this would be a short-lived project. Now, before deciding which set of 3D parts for the VTO conversion to print out, since there were many, I did consider all the options and decided to go with a model which has the motor mount directly mounted on the servo control horn. I chose that version over ones that use a push rod due to its simplicity, plus this one made use of a bearing on the other end, which further reinforced my trust in the design. Once the printed parts were done, the conversion itself was a relatively easy process. I installed the rear motor on the tail tube, although that now means that this part of the plane can no longer be disassembled due to too many wires running over it. I used the wiring opening for the GPS to pull the wiring inside the fuselage. I did decide to go with a 4S21700 lithium ion pack and knew it was going to be heavy so needed to move as much weight as possible to the rear. When it came to fitting the printed parts to the wings, all went well. They fit perfectly with no issues. Since I was going to also use new ESCs, I cut and soldered the power cables from the old ones as well as the signal wires. The new ESCs were some HGLRC 60 amp Biohelly 32s, which were also meant for that 7 inch copter that was never going to happen. Their size was not much bigger than the original ones, so there was no issue with fitting them in there. For the pivot servos, I decided to cut and use the wiring from the LEDs at the end of the wings, since I wasn't using those anyway. In the end, I had to dig out a fair amount of foam from the wing to hide the new connectors and solder points, but I think it still tidied up pretty nice. I did not have the recommended servos for this conversion, but I just had to print out new pieces for the bearing side of the motor mount, because apparently the Coronas are a tad bit taller than the ones this mount was designed for and the assembly holes were out of alignment, but a quick 3D print session later and that issue was sorted out. Then I needed a way to install the GPS unit as far away from power wires so as to avoid getting interference in the compass, so I designed this weird looking mount for that very purpose, and the reason why it is tilted back is to again try and move weight as far back as I can. It has a channel on the inside for the wiring and an opening on the bottom to allow the wiring from the rear of the plane to enter the fuselage. I also designed a rather simple mount for the VTX in the nose and later on I did design a mount for my Runcam Thumb Pro so I can at least have some proper HD recordings of the flight since my DVR also decided to call it quits and stopped working a few flights in. It is a bit nose heavy currently but I might just add a few grams of lead weights to the tail and sort this out for good. Also for this build I finally decided to give EORS a try so I reflashed my FRSky R9M module and an R9MM receiver although getting the receiver to flash was an exercise in frustration and took a few hours before I figured it out and had it bound and ready. Next receiver will go much quicker, but this really was a frustrating experience. Basically I had to flash a flight controller with beta flight, and then the suggested port didn't work, so I had to move it to another port on the board which finally worked, but figuring all this out took some 3 or 4 hours, and I still don't understand why the receivers can't be flashed like the R9M module via the radio, but oh well. It is done now, receiver is installed rather crudely if I might say on the vertical stab, but let's hope this will give some good results, plus it's putting even more weight to the back, little as it is, and that is definitely necessary for this build. What remained was to sort out the Arduplane programming for this type of veto. I am using the SpeedyB F405 wing controller here and I have been quite happy with it so far, hopefully it will handle this veto conversion without issues. 
After setting up the endpoints and midpoints for the pivoting motors, I decided to look around and see if there are any parameter files ready to use. I did come across a tune for this model from Painless360 and one of Audiopilot's developers called Andy, so thought I'd use that one for starters, although I knew it was probably not going to go very well for the Vito bit, since I was using wildly different motors and pivot servos, but it would be a starting point. I did not move over all of the parameters, selected to utilize only the PID settings for the forward flight phase and the PIDs plus a few more for the VTO part, the rest was set according to my preferences and needs. The last thing that I needed to tackle was the battery and since I had mistakenly ordered some 3000 mAh 35A discharge Samsung cells and had them laying around, I decided to finally put those to good use and make a battery for the T1 out of them. I did use a 0.3mm copper strip and soldering as opposed to spot welding because lately that is how I've been building all my lithium ion batteries and with the technique I've developed for doing it there haven't been any issues with overheating the cells. Not that there ever were issues but this latest technique makes things much easier for me too. So the battery did turn out weirdly shaped, but that was the only way to get it to fit in the Ranger without having to dig up foam from the bottom of the plane, although I did have to cut some foam off of the canopy. I also had to redo some wiring between the flight controller and the Ranger's power distribution board, as well as take away some foam from the back of the fuselage on the inside, so I can move the flight controller as far back as possible for CG's sake. With all said and done, the T1 Ranger Vito was finally done and ready for a test flight, but that is something I will tackle in the next video since this one is getting too long already and we have at least as much more to go through, so I will split them in two videos. Plus, YouTube tells me you guys have a pretty short attention span, so it makes no sense for me to do videos longer than 10 minutes anyway. So stay tuned for the second part of this build, like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already, whatever relevant links for this build there are, are in the description below, so check them out. Any support you can provide for my channel would be greatly appreciated, links for that are also below and I would like to express my eternal gratitude to all the people who have supported me so far and will continue to do so. Happy flying in the new year and I will see you soon.